Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to episode two of Pixels and Planners. I want to thank you guys so much for the positive feedback on the first episode. I truly appreciate it, and I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it because I am really loving making these. So today, I'm going to be doing my first blackout spread in my disc-bound catch-all. Super excited about it. I'm using my Jelly Roll <laughs> gel pens, and I'm using the items from the January Honey Bee Shop Babe Box, and the theme is Bare Necessities. It's a collaboration with Bare Necessities Sticker Co. So I hope you guys will enjoy this episode. If you enjoy it while you're watching, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not, and let's get into the episode. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, or if you follow me on Instagram, or if you happen to know me in real life, you know I'm a very emotional person. I cry almost daily, whether it's a happy cry, a sad cry, or crying from laughing. Video games make me emotional just like nothing else can. There are a few things I'm more passionate about than video games when it comes to hobbies. Eh, planning might be... it's probably equal. I could probably write a novel about all the times video games made me emotional, but there are a few moments that really stick out in my mind, and I'd like to share those with you guys today. The first is the announcement of Uncharted 4. It was a cold, cold day in November. November 14, 2013 to be exact. I drove to the Sony outlet in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, rest in peace, with my friend James for the midnight release of the PlayStation 4 right after I got out of a college class. My husband Jimmy was working at the Sony store at the time. People were lined up outside waiting to buy a shiny new PlayStation 4 console. Jimmy was inside working, and he would be picking up our console. To celebrate the U.S. launch of the PS4, Sony held an event in New York City. There were two TVs set up in the windows of the Sony store, and on them played coverage of the event. Since it was so cold and lines were long, James and I decided to park close to the store so we could see the screens and just stay in the car. After a while, the screens went black and a trailer started to play. Since we were in the car and couldn't hear what was being shown, we had to try and guess what the trailer was for. I remember seeing a map and saying, no, it can't be Uncharted 4. That's too good to be true. It can't be Uncharted 4. It's probably another Assassin's Creed or something. The trailer continued, the screen went black, and the word Uncharted popped up on the screen. There have been only a few moments in my life that have made me that excited. Simultaneously, I screamed and opened and shut my car door about three times in rapid succession. <laughs> oh, James, I'm sorry about your eardrums. I then began to cry. No surprise there. It was actually happening. Another Uncharted game was being made. I didn't care about anything else that was happening in the world at that time. I was just so happy that Uncharted 3 wasn't the end for Nathan Drake and his buddies. I am just a huge fan of Uncharted. And I just thought Uncharted 4, like, I was convinced it was never going to be a thing. I was just convinced that they were never going to make it. So that was a really emotional time for me. So, another Uncharted-related moment. This was when the... Uncharted and the Nathan Drake collection was announced. From the time that I got a PS4, I wished that I could replay Uncharted 1 through 3 with updated graphics and brand new trophy sets. It's my favorite game series after all, and replaying those games on my new console was something I always dreamed about. One day, while I was sitting in my office at work, I got a Google alert for Uncharted. Yeah, I, I had Google alerts on for Uncharted, and I actually still have them on. I just never turned them off because I was always like waiting for new news about Uncharted. I read about something called the Nathan Drake Collection for the PS4. Once it sank in and I realized exactly what that was, which was a remaster of the original three Uncharted games for the PS4, so they would have updated graphics and all new trophy sets and I could play them, you know, with the DualShock 4. Once that kind of sank in for me, um, I let out a huge gasp from my cubicle at work like <gasps> I couldn't even begin to like contain my excitement and my co-workers were concerned when they heard me because they thought like something was really wrong but honestly at this point they shouldn't be surprised because I've geeked out over many things in my time there it took me a good like five minutes to come back down and like calmly explain why I was so happy 
Uh, and since my coworkers aren't gamers, they didn't really understand why I was, <laughs> why I was smiling from ear to ear and just like crying tears of joy. But they were happy for me. There have been a few incidents since then where I've geeked out at work, and I think they're starting to understand just how important video games are to me. All right, the next moment is related to PT. If you don't know what PT is, I encourage you, if if you're not like super sensitive or freaked out um, by like horror games, just like search PT gameplay here on YouTube because I I just love this game. Let, let me explain. I remember when PT was teased at, it was at Gamescom, I believe, in 2014. I kind of have like a love-hate relationship with horror games because, well, you know, obviously they scare the crap out of me, but some of them I, I really do enjoy. But, you know, watching this uh, being announced at Gamescom, I just really wanted to play it. And, you know, it was called PT and it was a new IP and it said the developer was 7780 Studio, and I was like, oh, must be, you know, some new game studio, like an indie game or something. And it said that the game was going to be available for download right after it was shown at Gamescom, so Jimmy and I just downloaded it. We didn't really know, you know, what it was going to be. Uh, neither of us completed it right away because it was, like, almost too scary to play. We later found out via, like, you know, game news outlets and YouTube channels that P.T. was nothing more than a teaser for the new game in the Silent Hill franchise, Silent Hills. It would also star The Walking Dead's Norman Reedus, and would be directed by the legendary Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro. I was absolutely in love with the way the game was revealed and marketed. I thought it was just freaking genius. And then learning that Kojima was behind it, it all made sense. Everyone downloaded this thing and went into it having absolutely no clue what it was, who it was made by, and then we all found that it was one of the scariest, most intriguing gaming experiences ever. <sighs> this has a sad ending because unfortunately the game was cancelled and will likely never see the light of day thanks to Konami and that whole issue. However, lucky for me, I still have it downloaded, so if you downloaded it back then, before it was removed from the PlayStation Store, you can still play it. So I do still have a console with it on it. So I can play it whenever I want. Uh, but, you know, we'll always remember Lisa and, you know, how she scared the crap out of us. I, uh, the first time I played PT, I think I cried just from from being uh, scared, but it's just, it's such a unique experience, and, you know, I, I'm sad that you guys can't go and, like, download it right now, but definitely check out some videos here on, uh, on YouTube, and I streamed it way back in the day, and, you know, maybe I'll try and stream it again here soon. All right, so the next moment, this isn't going to be surprising at all, if you know me in, you know, any capacity, but, uh, this was the moment where you meet the giraffes in The Last of Us. It's an iconic gaming moment. So, you know, The Last of Us is right up there with the Uncharted series on my list of favorite games, and it just had a huge impact on me. If you watched the first episode where I talked about The Last of Us Part 2, you will know this. I, you know, when the original Last of Us came out, I lost so much sleep. Like, I just couldn't stop playing it. I really, I know it's polarizing and a lot of people just don't care for the gameplay part of it. Like some people say that, you know, the story's really good, but I don't really like the gameplay. I just couldn't disagree more. I love the gameplay just as much as the story. I just, I love it. And to me, you know, when I was first playing the game, I was so addicted to the gameplay and I wanted to see where the story was going because I, it's my first time playing. I didn't know what was going to happen. And, you know, there's one part in the game that sticks out in my mind, and anyone who's played The Last of Us, you know, maybe you don't remember all the details, but you, you have to remember the giraffe moment. I mean, it's iconic. When Joel and Ellie find the giraffe herd in Salt Lake City, um, sometimes I think about this moment just randomly. <laughs> um, and giraffes are my favorite animal, and that was true before this game 
So when this came up, like when this moment happened, um, it made me really, and I'm like tearing up right now, just thinking about it. I have played through that game so many times, seen it so many times, and a big part of it, honestly, is the, uh, th there's a lot of reasons that it makes me emotional, but the song that plays uh, at that part, and just the idea that there's still beauty left in this world that is like completely falling apart, and there's all this death, and you know, clickers running everywhere, and just, <laughs> there's a lot of just terrible stuff happening, but there's always, you know, something beautiful, and the whole theme of, like, look for the light, so, um, and, you know, I love that there were giraffes throughout the game, you know, you might not notice it the first time you play, but, like, right at the beginning of the game, um, in Sarah's room, there's a giraffe, you know, stuffed animal, you'll find, you know, little giraffe plushies throughout the game, and I just think it's really cool how they, like, tied that in. The first time I played through that particular scene, I remember just like putting the controller down and just staring at the giraffes and just like really taking in the moment and listening to the music and it was just a beautiful moment. It reminded me that, you know, like I said, there's still beauty in every situation, no matter how hopeless things may seem. And the last moment here was when I completed the original Life is Strange game. If you don't know, I'm a huge, huge fan of Life is Strange. I have played through all of the games. I've played through all of the original, um, Before the Storm. I've played through Captain Spirit, and I've played through Life is Strange 2, which is criminally underrated. I feel like just a lot of people didn't play the second one for whatever reason, and I just, I highly, highly, highly recommend playing Life is Strange 2. You know, Life is Strange is a game that had a profound impact on me. And when I first started the game, like, I really wasn't expecting it to be a game that was going to leave, like, a lasting impact on me. I knew that it was some kind of episodic game, you know, adventure game where your decisions matter and affect the story, and that it was somewhat similar to Heavy Rain and, like, Telltale games where there's, you know, a lot of quick time events and it's very... Um, simple gameplay, but I didn't know that it was going to make me think about, like, my future and my personal, it, my goals in my life and stuff. Like, it really hit me pretty hard. After I completed episode five, which is the final episode, and there's five parts to uh, The First Life is Strange, I just sat there, like, smiling and knowing that I made the right decision, because there's a big decision that you make at the end, and I felt I made the right one. I, uh, I remember I was streaming the game on Twitch when I beat it. And unfortunately, I didn't save the clip for whatever reason, but I remember I said, this is why I need to be involved in the games industry. Um, and it's something I kind of like just blurted out at the time, but I've, I've really like thought thought back on that, and you know... Games like Life is Strange inspire me to make my own game someday. It's something that I've always wanted to do, whether it's, you know, simply, um, really my goal is to just be in the credits of a game, whether I write something or I'm a voice actor or whatever I'm doing, I just want to be in the credits of a game, honestly. Um, because, you know, video games like Life is Strange have done so much for me, and I want to create something that helps people and changes lives in that same way. Um, I have no idea where to begin, but <laughs> for now, I will just continue to write down ideas in my journal in hopes that one day I will have a hand uh, in making my own game in some way. So, you know, those are five, five times video games made me really emotional. Um, and I just want to say, you know, don't ever be afraid of, like, wearing your geekiness on your sleeve. If something makes you emotional and has a positive impact on your life, don't ever feel like you have to hold that in or hide that from anyone. I'm just going to end this with a quote by Simon Pegg that I'm sure you've all heard, like, a thousand times, but it, it bears repeating because it's so good. Being a geek is all about being honest about what you enjoy and not being afraid to demonstrate that affection. 
it means never having to play it cool about how much you like something. It's basically a license to proudly emote on a somewhat childish level rather than behave like a supposed adult. Being a geek is extremely liberating. And I, I concur. I agree 100% with that quote. So, that is the video today. That is Pixels and Planners Episode 2. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, what I want to know now is, what are some times that video games made you emotional? What games were they? What moments were they? I would love to know. I would love to hear you know, what games and what moments had an impact on you guys. So please leave a comment below and I will definitely read your comments and respond. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, turn on notifications so that you are always notified and never miss an upload. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I, I don't know about you, I'm not trying to like toot my own horn, but I freaking love how this spread came out. <laughs> I just, I absolutely love it. Um, this was, like I said at the beginning, my first blackout spread I've ever done. And I was nervous about it. And I was also nervous because I normally use dot grid paper, so getting everything to like line up was kind of, kind of tricky. But I really had fun with this. I think that this is like... I mean, Personality Crisis 2.0 is still my favorite babe box because it's black and purple and it's, like, just perfect in every way. But this is definitely my second favorite. Um, it's just... It's so freaking cute. And the hollow is absolutely gorgeous. So, I love how this came out. But, anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling let you guys go. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time.